break my food. Good evening. This is Glenda Carlin, and it is September 19th, 2023. Um, May. Can everybody see me okay? Should I get on some more light? How's it look? It's okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. September 19, 2023. This is my weekly Zoom, uh, virtual Zoom meeting, and where I incorporate a Course in Miracles, Zotian, Buddhism, Zen. I never know exactly what all things Holy Spirit brings to me, and I decide to to integrate here. Oh, first thing we want to do is invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, be here with us. You're always here, but we invite you in. You, you won't do anything against our will. We want our will to be one with yours, to have insights tonight, guide me what to do or say, and also let us all have some fun here. Thank you. Thank you for always being here, helping us always supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Holy Son of God, Gonzalo. Holy Son of God, Barbie. Holy Son of God, Joan. Holy Son of God, Greg. Holy Son of God, Lynn. Holy Son of God, Nance. Holy Son of God, Angela. Holy Son of God, Debbie. Holy Son of God, Leon. Holy Son of God, Glenda. And this meeting goes till about eight, sometimes a little after eight, but then I stop the recording and those that want stay and chat a little bit. And we just get to know each other and share what's going on in our life because this is recorded. And, and people tell me, they message me or et cetera, that they like hearing comments and questions from people. So in, in during this, if anyone has a comment or a question, you can just raise your hand or at the end before the recording stop, I... Uh, uh, ask for comments or questions, but this is recorded. So anything you don't want to share publicly, then just keep it till after I stop the recording and you can ask those things then. Welcome. I'll wait till Edward's uh, vid sound comes in. Welcome, Holy Son of God. Edward, welcome, welcome. Um, the topic for tonight's um, conversation and meeting i didn't know this was going to be the topic that's usually how it works out <laughs> it, which is this is a question what is the hardest lesson you will ever learn and in the end the only one and i'm going to repeat that because when i what how this came up was when i'm writing i start accumulating information based on my experiences for the week and things I hear through Holy Spirit, and then I start searching A Course in Miracles, then it, it kind of leads me to different truths in the course. And this one came up, what is the hardest lesson you will ever learn? And in the end, the only one. And per Jesus, the hardest lesson you will ever learn. He ne I never stopped being amazed at the intricacies of what he's got inside this book this big core spiritual book is the hardest lesson you ever learn is that truth is true. Welcome Joanne and Trevor. Truth is true. And now Jesus says, cause this, there's a whole nother little, um, and in the end, the only one, now I'm going to look at the end. I send an email out each week that I put together about the talk. And at the end of this email, after my uh, signature block, there's like, there's like 22 Jesus quotes that I went through the course searching the truth. Welcome, Holy Son of God, Joanne. Welcome, honey. Because uh, uh, he's saying hardest lesson you're ever going to learn is that truth is true. And so I went looking through the course on some truths and there's 20, no, there's 29 listed there. Then, then there were just paragraphs that I copied to, as well. So you, if you're not on my email list and want to receive this email, 
just private message me on Facebook because uh, here is this. This is in a uh, lesson. Let's see where this showed up. This is page seven, page six. This must be in text uh, chapter 14, section two, paragraph two. That's not exactly the one, but here's what it says. Truth is true. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is real. And everything beside it's not there. Now, isn't that just that one, those, those two sentences? Nothing else is, everything beside it's not there. Let me make that one distinction for you that you cannot make but need to learn. Your faith in nothing is deceiving you. Throughout the course, Jesus just tells us we're, when we believe in, in the reality of the self-concept and the existence of a world, we're believing in nothing. Now, of course, we don't walk out in front of a car. <laughs> we don't do something stupid. Uh, I, I visit my doctor aunt semi-annually, annually, and everybody... Um, does their own thing about vaccinations. I just got the new COVID shot. <laughs> but anyway, but he's saying, of course, this is, you know, he uses all kinds of words. This is a dream world and hallucination, a fantasy illusion. Yeah, he can say that all day long, but do I really get it? That's why we practice truths. We, uh, in that lesson 31, Jesus says there's two aspects of practice he really wants us to do. And we've learned that he doesn't use the word, word meditation but twice, but uses words like form of practice or on a sustained basis. Um, he uses other words to describe meditation, but that we use meditation of, of, of morning and evening. And that's in the, I believe it's in the manual for teachers, section 16. He, he says, you must, there's a generalization he's going to do is that he wants you to meditate morning and evening before you go to sleep. And after you wake up, spend, spend time with God. And then he wants us during the day to practice these ideas he gives us each day and incorporate them in our daily life. Just like he says, um, and by doing that, we learn that truth is true. But if we're not careful, ego doesn't believe truth is true. It just keeps asking you questions. <laughs> it keeps doubting, running you in circles, asking you questions like why. And you can you can bet if you're if you're asking questions that are why or uh, don't feel happy and joyous, feel anything but happy, joyous, and loving. Then Jesus teaches it. And of course, we're li I'm listening to the wrong voice and I need to choose again. And it's a constant choosing. It's a, it's a constant awareness of what, the, what I'm thinking, saying and doing. And, th and if I'm not thinking with Jesus, Holy Spirit, God's way they think, then I choose again. It's just a, it's a practice. That's the practice. And it's one foot ahead of the, one step at a time, one foot ahead of the other foot. This is how I look back on this awakening process. I was just methodic. I hung in there. I damn what hung in there, dedicated, dedicated to practicing the lessons, meditating, etc. But even when I did all that, I had no idea that the course these truths are literal, are they're literal, meaning these aren't just words. Like Jesus says, you're the light of the world. In those 29 truths that I put after the after my signature block, here's what, he, you know, he says, uh, oh, gee, there's so many of them here. Let's see, let's just pick some. Um, is that one late? You are the light of the world with me. That's chapter five. Uh, section two, paragraph 10. It is necessary to repeat that your belief in darkness, in darkness and hiding 
is why the light cannot enter. That's why we practice these lessons, because what we're doing, we're unlearning the culture of being in a form, being in a body and being, living in this world. We're unlearning all those that are per, about our personality, our self-concept. And somewhere in here, it'll come up tonight. Jesus says he wants you to bring everything to him, every concept, et cetera. Well, anyway, uh, you are the light of the world. Uh, the vision of Christ looks on all in light. That's chapter 13, section five. The son of God is only light for he is whole. Now, I'm not going to keep going because I've got a whole bunch of these about these telling you your light. That's literal. You are a light being experiencing living in a human form. That's the deal. Your spirit, a, a, a light spirit, a light being living in, in this, inside this flesh suit, inside this form. And then the other thing he says, your love, your love. Um, where's the, uh, love needs only this invitation. It comes freely to all the sonship being what the sonship is. By your awakening to it, meaning love, you're merely forgetting what you are not. This enables you to remember what you are. That's chapter seven, section IV. That's four, paragraph seven. Because we've forgotten what we are, what our brothers are, and what God is. That's why we're doing the course. We're unlearning these habits, these habitual habits, these habitual thoughts. Uh, so the light, your love. Um, let's see if there's someone else I want to put in that. Um, it's your function to behold in your brother what he sees not. Don't you love that? That's the advanced forgiveness. We behold it. We just, we're faking it while we make it. We don't believe every one of these people out there or even ourself is the Christ, is the Buddha, is God. And that's one other truth is, uh, I think that was lesson 153, call yourself by your real name, which is God. So first we got to get to the, uh, accept the idea we're a Christ, we're a Buddha and, and other people are Christ and Buddhas to realize there's only God. Of course, he's our creator and source, but there's only God. Well, anyway, what I'm wanting to, wanting to get to here is this course is literal. It's literal. You are literally light, love, the spirit, the spirit, but we've forgotten this. And ego wants us to believe other things and not believe what's true. So, you just keep doing the lessons. You keep meditating, <laughs> uh, practicing, and integrating this into your daily life. Now, here's here's what. Um, so I can believe. I believe because I I I feel the light. The light. Is, the arc of light is open, and the great ray is downloads in my form. So it the light radiates and reabsorbs. That's just. It, the cord of light, the great ray comes in the top of the head and, and lights the whole form, but we're just asleep to that. We awaken to that by awakening our mind, waking our, our heart. And doing these lessons, you will awaken to these experiences. But the other thing I never thought was literal. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I thought not, not, I not, no, I, no idea is Last week, and I think the week before, I think I was talking about opening the crack in the eternal moment. And I thought, well, handy dandy, you know. And Jesus says, the only real time, what's he say here? Um, is now. <laughs> I want to find that. Let me see where I wrote that. Sit on, I know you're here. Oh, it's on this page. Your name is God. That's workbook 183, not 153. Oh, while I'm looking here, I'll find this one in case I forget. Everything lives and moves in you. Now picture that deal. That is literal. The whole universe passes through you. 
all the universe, all images, all thoughts, everything lives and moves in you. That is in chapter 31, section 8, paragraph 12. Clear in your likeness does the light shine forth from everything that lives and moves in you. For we have reached where all of us are one and we are home where you would have us be. The big you is the God because we're all one. These are just images and, that are projected from the clear light mind. Your clear, our clear light God mind It's powerful. It is never sleeps. She says that in the course, it never sleeps. It's always creating, always making images and forms. So how do we wake up from this dream and remember what we are? One of them, one of them besides meditating, integrating things into our daily life and practicing advanced forgiveness, thinking of our brothers as Christ, God, Buddha, turn our day over to the Holy Spirit, is trying to stay in the now. And there's a correlation between meditation and trying to stay in the now. As I look at how all this fits together for me and in general is in meditation. And uh, that's in chapter 30, I mean, lesson 31, where Jesus says he wants you just to mm, let these thoughts stream go like a stream we'll find page one page one and two oh see this this was a kind of a complicated talk here so i'm fitting it together as i as i talk um lesson oh lesson 31 i copied at the whole end of this so that i got nine pages here <laughs> Lesson three, here it is. Lesson 31, seven, eight. I want to read to you what he says here because it's a big deal. Lesson 31, he says, the form includes two aspects. I described that to you. The longer practice period, see, that's meditation. Once in the morning and one at night. As you survey, you close your eyes, he says. Survey your inner world and merely let whatever thoughts cross your mind come into your awareness, each to be considered for a moment and then replaced by the rest. Try not to establish any kind of hierarchy among them. Watch them come and go as dispassionately as possible. Do not dwell on anyone in particular, but let but try to let the stream, calls it a stream like a creek or river, stream move on evenly and calmly without any special investment on your part. As you sit and quietly watch your thoughts, repeat today's idea. Now, why this important is, also in the course, I used to think when Jesus talked about wandering, he was talking about, I just wander around in the world. No, no. What he's talking about wandering is the mind wandering. The mind wandering. And that is, um, I, I, I wanted to... Make sure, because see, this is a big deal. I didn't used to know, I didn't know all, what the hell was going on. That's the way the ego mind is. It just is wandering into the past, into the future, and not sure as hell, not in the now. Now, um, oh, I got so many pages. What I was wanting to tell you is, in meditation, the kind that, Jesus just talked about. Now, I'm not making that up. He says, close your eyes, look within, and these thoughts, let them just come by. Let them come and go. Well, in Dzogchen Buddhism, without Dzogchen Buddhism, I've been meditating daily, almost daily with them for two years. I would not be where I'm at because I've learned the nature of mind. I've learned how the, the ego mind works and this gap between thoughts is in the centering of the attention is spirit, is your light. Well, anyway, so in meditation, what it, in the sky is called sky gazing. We picture that the mind is like the sky. There's no end to the sky that we can see. And we let thoughts come and go on that vast spacious sky. Well, that's the same thing that Jesus just described there. And when you're off 
And then when the mind wanders and pe very few people really get to where they can grasp, it takes a while figuring out when their mind wanders to go to the grocery store, visit a relative for whatever they're going to do. They just bring their attention. It's called the leash of remindfulness back to this vertical center between your two eyes. And behind your forehead, there's a third eye that there, that when it opens, this helps do the Christ vision, this vision of union of, of oneness, not two, but you got to build a spiritual muscle of, of exercising, bringing your attention back to this vertical center. And when I look back on meditation, I mean, I was falling asleep. I was just nodding off and it's okay. This is part of the process. Then I'd be off wandering with a thought and then I'd kind of come back and go, oh, back to center, back to the center. And this center space is this great ray light that's in the course and called a core light in Hinduism. It's coming straight in. It's behind you for it. It's a clear light. So you're faking it while you're making it because you can't see a clear light, but you just see spaciousness. This is all looking in from within your eyes. Your eyes are looking at that space behind your forehead. Can't even look like moonlight. But all I'm wanting to get to is you're coming back to that. You're not, you're taking, bringing your wandering mind back to this center. And in my email, Jesus says um, that we bring them the, the dark, our thought back from darkness to the center. I never thought about what the hell center is he talking about? It's behind your for it, this middle area, there's a there's a third eye. You just picture a vertical, a vertical axis, it's called in the course. It's a vertical axis. That's the light. That's your whole spirit, love light. And there's a horizontal axis, which is a physical plane, and where they intersect is this center. So you don't worry about where they intersect. You just know it's vertical and it's between your eyes. You're faking it while you're making it. But then when you get off the meditation cushion. You start to real, wake up to my mind just wandered off again, because what am I doing in the moment? Now, so that's what I'm trying to get to is how do you live your life in the moment? Now, that's a high order. How do you live in the moment? Well, first, you got to figure out what the hell is a moment. So a moment, I've been listening to some YouTube videos from that Lama Surya Das. He used to be my teacher. Now he's just he's a friend. But without him and Dzogchen Buddhism and A Course of Miracles, I would not be where I'm at. But he on YouTube has all these videos about medi how th this meditation that you can practice with. But it's um, a breath. You can there's a few uh, between the in breath and the out breath. There's a gap. You can if you pause a little bit. There's a gap. Just pause. Don't make them come so close together. That's a moment. Just picture there's a moment. Then when you're in that moment, just stop and, and assess, what am I thinking? What am I saying? What am I doing? And if it was you're like me, my mind had wandered off to the past or the future. If I was standing in my kitchen counter before I knew it, my mind had gone somewhere, some other past it, even when I was wanting to cut a vegetable maybe I was cutting a vegetable for a, a few seconds but if I'm not careful the mind wanders off now so what happens is we have we be, develop an awareness this is called when we're an ego mind it's ordinary awareness we're no we don't know what's going on we're just it's like the train running on the track it's just going and like the monkey mind the monkey mind it's just going um and I, I'm going to digress a second. And I got a, a, a story I heard about a monkey. Picture you're looking in the window. Uh, you're picturing a house and it's got five windows in it. And you see this monkey come up in a window. And then there's a monkey in another window, monkey in a window, monkey in a window, these five windows. And if you didn't know what was going on, you'd think there were five monkeys in that house. No, there's only one monkey, but he's jumping into that window into that he's going with that thought that that's all that story means is because we we got we visualize if you're like me we visualize or these truths we have to bring them home you bring them home to your and make them practical for you i just always try to give examples bring it home 
but you're wanting to, you're, you're corralling the monkey mind. You're mastering. That's the whole course of miracles. Unlearning this egoic mind who's that's running on a railroad track, a past backwards, past railroad track future. You want to stop and get off the train. You want to stop, but how the hell do you stop? It's one moment at a time. So in between the breath, I stop and I think, well, if I'm not, I'm not wholeheartedly cutting my vegetable, then my mind's wandered. I come back to cut my vegetable. And then I can think about, well, who is cutting this vegetable? It's really spirit. Spirit is God. Spirit is animating my form. I'm not cutting the vegetable because I'm not animating my form. Spirit is Christ spirit, Buddha spirit, God light. It animates the clear light in your mind, the mind, the light you see in your eyes, the warmth you feel in your body, the pulse, your heartbeat only comes because of the spirit. That breath of life leaves, then your spirit's gone from that form and it's a dead duck. It ain't moving. You're not moving your hand. But the thing is, I've been rotely just doing whatever ego said. Uh, and that's the purpose of the course is to bring your wandering mind back to the center, see the light of spirit, think of your brothers as spirit, yourself as spirit, as you cut the vegetable or do whatever you're doing. Okay, so uh, in one of these books, Lama Suri Das wrote called Buddha Standard Time. It was this phrase that I talked about last week, opening the crack in the eternal moment. Now look what that word says there, eternal moment. I had no idea that this was literal. <laughs> I had no idea that there would be an eternal, what's eternal mean? That means forever. That there's an eternal now, right now. There's a Buddha standard time. Isn't that funny? The name of that book. He, it's still the time, Eastern time zone I'm in. There's a Buddha standard time. There's a Christ standard time. There's a Christ time, a timeless time. Well, hell, the course can talk about that all day long, but I didn't know it was true, but it's true. But how you know it's true, you start practicing. You start bringing your attention to stop. It could be your breath or you have sticky notes around reminding you, I'm going to stop and think and stay in the moment. And to do that, one, and then you're thinking, what am I thinking, saying, and doing? And it'll wander off. You just bring your attention back to whatever you're wholeheartedly doing, talking to your family member. You can, I can talk to a neighbor, and before I know it, my uh, car goes by, and ego mind has gone off with the car. My mind is no longer right with that neighbor, listening to what they're saying one-on-one. -on -one. Granted, there that's, that's a false image, but in remembering to be in the moment, we also remember their Christ. That's that's called Christ vision in A Course of Miracles. In Dzogchen Buddhism, it's called diamond vision. A, also pure perception. Where, and in course, it's called advanced forgiveness. As often as we can, we're remembering, we're saying spirit or God, or you are spirit, whole pureness, and all is forgiven and released. To what image it show up at the grocery store, in the gas line, at, you know, when you're at a stoplight, your family, your loved ones, usually the last ones we think are God or spirit. You're practicing. You're just methodically, methodically practice. Do not stop is all I got to say. Go straight ahead. Do not stop because it pays off. All this work you do goes directly into the unconscious mind that Jesus talks about in the course that we know nothing about. But the unconscious mind believes everything you say, do, and think is about you. So if I think, say, and do that my neighbors, politicians, or people are spirit, well, guess what? The unconscious mind starts to believe your spirit, and it generalizes it, and you will believe it. I'm not kidding you. It's true. This is truth is true. This is truth. But now what I want to get to is... <laughs> So I go out walking, I go out walking and I think about, I'm going to crack open, opening the crack of the eternal moment. And I'm not kidding you, last week I called it unzipping. Just picture you, you, you're in this vertical, I stand off the side of the road and I'm, I'm picturing this vertical, I hold my hand up even, there's this vertical light and I picture the moment and I see a little crack, like you see in an egg, I see a crack start to show up in that space 
And then the crack opens and guess what? The eternal now is there because this space on this other side is time, is the is time, ego time, not eternal time. So yeah, crack and open eternal moment, moment at a moment at a time, a micro moment, a nanosecond, a split second. You're doing this. And, and it, I'm not kidding you, it'll open. You just relax, it'll open. And there's a space, the space expands. It's into this vast spaciousness, which is your mind and God mind and one, the mind of everything, creator, that all these images are coming and going on. Okay, so just picture there's a crack, like on the eggshell, let it open, unzip it and and be there. Be there for whatever that microsecond is. It's huge. It's huge to be there in that second moment. Um, and then before you know it, then uh, you hear a sound or whatever. But what I'm, uh, then what I want to get to is in this awakening, all as you're the light illumines your form, all these chakras open, the great ray, arc of lights release, the great ray comes in, or oh, heart opens. And all this shows up in the body because the body is an image in the mind. So when the mind's illumined, the body is illumined. It's just the way it works. I'm, I'm not, I'm not just making this up. This is how this works. So um, you become a Buddha. You become a Christ. You're a walking God, because and you're you're a walking Buddha, Christ, and God now, but just awake, asleep to it. But it's just veiled by these thoughts, concepts that you have a self-concept and an existence of the world. But in moments, you can wake up. So, in it, so, but you're, and when you're waking up, your senses, hearing, sight, smell, taste, they all get heightened to this heightened Christ Buddha conscious, Buddha, Buddha deal. I mean, I mean, it's not regular life then. You're in this, this higher you're in your true self your big self s big i self god self big s self okay so in the moment when you're in the moment when you can be awake in a moment you just are hearing just hearing something or you're just seeing something these are these senses tasting something uh touching something but guess what I, it's in my email but get i realized what was happening to me in the now i was aware of what i was hearing like a bird sound but before i knew it ego would start to judge the bird i'm not kidding you what kind of bird was it was the bird sound whatever uh a bird's a, a beautiful little thing, so that's probably not the best illustration. Let's talk a tree or a mailbox. Before you know it, it's dissecting a mailbox, that that handle was falling off over there. Why don't they fix that? And that mailbox is one of them and falling down on the ground. Why didn't they fix that? You know, ego just talking up storm. It's all judgments. And there is... Um, Here it is. This fits this. This is in chapter 31, section 5, 7. Well, not, no, not exactly. That, th this is back the one I was looking for. I gotta, hold on. Holy Spirit, help me. There's so much I want to cover. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's go back to the mailbox. See, I could just see a mailbox. And then before, in a split second, then I see a car. Split second, I hear traffic on I-95. Split second, there's a taste in my mouth. Split second, there's all the senses are doing their thing. Those are the things that we judge with. Those senses go out from this form. They're doors. They're doors that kind of open up and go out. Before you know it, they're judging everything. The, the mind is a sense. The mind is a sixth sense besides hearing, sight, nose, throat, taste, touch. 
But what I want to get at is I wasn't in the moment. I had to bring my wandering mind back from it judging the mailbox and judging the bird to just see a bird, just see a mailbox, just see a person and remember that their spirit, even a mailbox has spirit in it, light. Light is running through everything. It's going through all the particles. Einstein even said all the, we're space and light. It's all particle. It's all light, but it's spirit. It's God's, the creative God spirits running through everything and making all these forms come and go. In the Garden of Eden, everything was pure, whole, innocent, beautiful. The Son of God decided he wanted to play with images. He made bodies. He made images. He made trees. And, and th what I want to get at is picture what he was doing when you're awake and he was awake in the Garden of Eden and we're, we're just or kind of when you awaken, you are spirit in your form. You're inside your form looking out and feeling what it feels like to be in your body. How does your arm feel? How's your stomach feel? What do your feet feel? Your spirit experiencing a body. Well, in the Garden of Eden, the Son of God was doing that to everything. He was inside the tree. He was inside the bird. He was inside the grass. He was, he was just having a hell of a time because that's he made the garden. We made the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is here now. Heaven is here now. We just don't see it. It's all perfect, just like it is, which means perfect in spirit. Spirits animate and everything, just some things get miscreated. But we just keep looking at the light. But yet, if we need to see, go to a psychotherapist or call 911, we sure as heck do it. We go to the grocery store. This is the practical way, middle way. We're not a bump on a log. We're not a, a wooden Buddha practicing without living in this life. What I'm describing to you is how to live in this life awakened is moment to moment, remembering your spirit. And, and yet you feel what you're feeling. You, you see what you're seeing, but yet you're catching your mind when it goes off and judges things. It's a wandering mind. You just bring it back to this vertical space and think and choose again, like Jesus says in chat in, in the course. But picture what happened in the Garden of Eden. The Son of God was inside our form. Maybe it was Adam's form, and then there was Eve's form. <laughs> and they're having a great old time. They're experiencing life inside a form, touching each other laughing, having fun, tasting things, you know, having sex. It's the whole deal, but it's spirit doing it. They've not made any judgments yet that something's good or bad or that they're a body. They're spirit. They're spirit. Just experiencing what's in a, being in a form. They weren't asleep yet, but this is my take on it. I don't know if it's true or not. Because only Jesus and of course the miracle says in the pre, what's he call it? The pre or garden of Eden state. That's what he says. He only mentions it like once. In the pre garden of Eden state, everything's just, uh, it, it was me that made the judgment that something's wrong with form, that form's bad. No, no, no. Form's not bad at all. That's a judgment. Form is animated by spirit. Every, it's just beautiful. It's wondrous that the son of God can create such things with our fingertips to touch. I mean, really to talk, to uh, love each other physically and spiritually. I mean, it's just a, it's just a marvelous dancing with life, but all of a sudden in the garden of Eden, I'm not sure what happened, but Adam or Eve fell in love with being in a body. They fell in love with it. And, and maybe because they were had this relationship with two people. That's what Jesus calls a special relationship, something that needs to be healed, where we join in union with those loved ones that we have right around us, etc. But all that matters is the Son of God fell asleep and believed he was a body. So the whole course of miracles is getting you to unlearn that you're a body and unlearn the self-concept 
And somewhere I've got, Jesus has this beautiful quote. Um, chapter 31, section five. There will come a time, this is a direct quote. There will come a time when images have all gone by. There's, there's some, I left out some stuff. Where concepts of self have been laid by. Then truths return. So this whole course, and that Dzogchen Buddhism too, a whole deal, it interlocks with the course so beautifully, wanting you to let go of this self-concept you have and the con and the belief, the concept in the existence of the world. That's what he's saying here. There come a time when images, images have all gone by. That means all images, all the universe, all the images have gone by. Where concepts of self have been laid by, then truths return. So in this space of a moment, when you take a breath and before you take the exhale, just stop. That's called a sacred pause, a gap between thoughts. It can be a gap. It's a moment. It's a moment of the eternal moment when there's been no judgment done. But you can go to a moment. So you just start practicing. That's all I want to say here. Because if you don't start practicing, you're not ever going to. It can't culminate. This can't culminate because it becomes a generalization. Jesus describes it. All this practice actually then becomes generalized and you then believe it and live it oh so what i want to say to you is this is wild i i <laughs> greg's here that's new so he's not used to how i <laughs> what how i'm talking about my own experiences but i never thought opening a crack in the internal moment that it was literal but it's literal i've been practicing for a uh, a few weeks this now granted this is a culmination of years of work of meditation integrating the course zochen truths but it can happen to you guys in a flash i'm not i'm just i don't know how it's going to happen but the eternal moment opened it's staying it's not leaving and how I know it's not leaving is my mind's not wandering off like it used to. If, in a split second, if it does, I go, no. What am I thinking, saying, doing? There, there is a now. It's called nowness, awareness, uh, eternal moment. Jesus calls it the now, the now. And it's literally... Christ time, which is eternal. And that goes along with that you're a light being and that you're love. And I just say that the light is soaked with love. It's just clear light soaked with love. All right. So let's see if I've gotten any thoughts or questions because this got, I kind of tried to weave it back to what all's been going on. Oh, I know. Oh, oh, so when I'm in the moment, I remember it came to me about this Garden of Eden. I'm spirit. I am spirit. Practice living in this body. So then I thought, well, hey, in the Garden of Eden, that's what Son of God was doing. So I would stand and look at a tree I'm not kidding you. And I would go into the tree. My mind would go into the tree. And I would experience, now this is pretty far out, even for me. But I was inside the tree feeling, I could see that it was a palm tree. It was round. And then the, the breeze was waving the branches, the fronds, you know. But we are spirit. Spirit animates everything. And spirit, even though this screen looks like tiles, Light goes through all your forms. It doesn't stop. It's only light. You each per that's why what happens as you awaken, you get more empathetic for people because you could you almost feel their feelings. 
because and why you can is because we're one mind, one God mind. And you've opened up to that one God mind who's created and animated, made all, but we did it. We're the God, we're the son of God that created, made earth, the galaxies and all the stuff. So we're just, when you're awake, you can experience being in a tree. I experience flying with inside the bird. That's just the way it is. You are spirit. You can, now, uh, uh, that's why, though in meditation or other experiences, I'm always careful to ask uh, or say to Holy Spirit, enlightened beings and such, to be aware because there are spirits. I mean, this is the, the picture. We got minds. We're each a spirit, but there's spirits that, access want to go and be in other bodies i mean just they're called hungry ghosts blah 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 that's outside the thing of here but i just am always kind of protecting myself that holy spirit i just want holiness holiness surround me and holiness because i mean in the illusion all kinds of crap's going on i mean really but anyway uh so let's see, I'm going to read some of these, but don't you love everything lives and moves in you. Now, how you can picture that, because I've sat with that before, is picture there's just a galaxy. There's just this space and all our forms are connected to a great ray and the great ray brings a light. It's like a cord. Each of you got a cord of light sticking out of the top of your head, just going all through the, your forms. That light, you're just, that it mimics the ocean waves, the breath, the coming and going. And that's why it create these images come and go on in front of us. And don't, you know, granted some stay longer than others, but they're still impermanent. There's a movement. There's a movement that follows our breath the ocean waves, the moon, the gravity of the moon, et cetera. But all these images, your spirit just flow through you nonstop. If you let them go, just relax. When you're in the flow, it's called, things just come and go based on your karma, cause and effect. And if we let things come and go without attachment and aversion, then we're not having as many hard knocks. Where then you let things come and go, you see them, you see them, you hear them. And when you need, need, need to interact with something, you interact with it. It becomes a flow, a flow. There is a flow to all of this. Clear in your likeness does the light shine forth from everything that lives and moves in you. For we have reached where all of us are one and we are home where you would have us be. Now, your name is God. That's lesson 183. Love is all encompassing. That's in the textbook introduction. Forgive and be forgiven. Do not turn away in aimless wandering again. Now, that's, that's in, uh, where's that one? I don't think I wrote a little article on that. I didn't write it right where that was. Do not turn away in aimless wandering. See, that's the mind. Do not turn away. So just now you're going to have to fake it while you make it. But when the Jesus throughout the course says, close your eyes and watch these things come and go. And then they're turn within for this internal light. There's a light in there. <laughs> but when you awaken, and when you're off the meditation cushion and you're not without your eyes closed, this clear light, spacious light is, it covers the earth, all the universes, because that's God light. You, that's called Buddha vision, Christ vision, where you see that all images are in the one big God mind, the one big snow globe, if you want to call it that, the one big sphere, the one big God mind. Everything's coming and going in that one mind. Uh, and you can, and you're in the flow. You're in the flow. You're always in the flow because things are just coming and going. But you're just wanting to become aware when your mind wanders. 
And Jesus says, do not turn away in aimless wandering again. Somewhere else in the course, Jesus says, we're too tolerant of mind wandering. I never really knew what that meant. So we just bring, come back to the moment. Yet the reason for the course is that you do not know what you are. And the truth is true that you are light, love, spirit. That's, you know, you knew not, you're waking up to what you are. And then what are these other truths that I've got? Here's the deal. The urgency, and you, Jesus used that word, is only in dislodging your mind from its fixed position here. That's chapter 16, VIA. The urgency is only in dislodging your mind from its fixed position here. And see, that's what happens with meditation. Jesus is having us and integrating these ideas throughout the day. You're bringing your mind, attention back to your mind. Oh, I'm going to think about that idea. And Jesus told me to think about that idea for 10 minutes or 15. Oh, Jesus wants me to meditate morning and evening. I said, okay, I can do this. I can start this. Is that the, you're dislodging, that's dislodging your mind from fixed positions of the, your self-concept and the world existence. It's huge. I mean, that's your urgency. <laughs> See the light that would awaken you. Yet, this that, here's the quote, yet he has not awakened from the dream, so his mind remains exactly as it was before. He has not seen the light that would awaken him and end the dream. Now, that's why I'm wanting you to fake it while you make it, about there's a light behind your forehead. It's a clear light, a moonlight. Sometimes it shows up as colors. I don't know what Holy Spirit has in store for you. And we never get a stuck or attached to a particular color. It's all clear light. But we've spent our lifetime thinking ego thoughts. You are the light of the world. How are you going to remember your light? Jesus says, he says, yet he has not awakened from the dream. So his mind remains exactly as it was before. He has not seen the light that awaken him would awaken him and end the dream. What difference does the content of a dream make in reality? One either sleeps or wakens. There's nothing in between. That's workbook 140, 140. So in those moments when you, just a moment, just split second, you just sense space or light or you're in a moment. It's huge. And I'm here to verify that gap between thoughts gets wider and wider as you bring your wandering mind back during meditation, back to the center, it wanders again, you bring it back to the center over and over and over again. That's the practice of bringing the wandering mind back to center. Then when you're off, you know, living in your life, working in your kitchen, you're fully there when you're, I'm sweeping the floor, when I'm doing whatever, and just become aware when I, my mind leaves to go into the past or the future, bring it back to the now and remember, oh, I'm spirit, I'm spirit. I'm going to just sweep the floor right here. You're wholeheartedly doing whatever you're doing. Then plus at the same time, it's called advanced forgiveness or diamond vision. You're faking it while you're making it by saying, oh, I'm spirit. I'm Christ, I'm Buddha, I'm God. And then you go on with sweeping the floor. and But aware when your mind wanders, the ego takes you off on a, on a tangent. Bring it back. This practice is called sp is spiritual, uh, building a spiritual muscle. Um, here's the chapter two, VI4. You're much too tolerant of mind wandering and are passively condoning your mind's miscreations. Yo, baby, that's the deal. The atonement is a solution of undoing to save the past in purified form only. Don't you love that? I condensed that from chapter five, uh, section five, paragraph seven. If the one responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself, and I assure you that it is, then the responsibility for what is atoned for cannot be yours. The dilemma cannot be resolved except by accepting the solution of undoing. See, the solution of undoing. See, you're undoing the this ego mind. You're unlearning all these things. The dilemma could be 
oh, here, you would be responsible for the effects of all your wrong thinking if it could not be undone. The purpose of the atonement is to save the past in purified form only. Because that's why in this unconscious mind, as you do your work, Holy Spirit and Jesus, they bring these thoughts to mind, images from the past. And the purpose of that is for you to think of that person or event as Christ, Buddha, God. It may take a hundred or 500 times thinking of a person, an event as God when it was a bad deal. It seemed like to be a bad deal when it was going on. You still are not doormats. We call 911 when we want. We don't aren't psychologically abused or physically abused and call for help and stop that. But yet, as soon as you can, we think of all people and the events involved in whatever the turmoil was as spirit. That's the crux of the whole course. And as doing that, you're undoing these egoic thoughts. So truth is true. <laughs> and I'm here to verify literally, literally true. You're the light of the world. You're love. You, there's an eternal moment, timeless time. Anyway, any thoughts or comments before I stop the recording? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming out this evening. And I got to remember before we thoughts or comments, stop and look at every tile on the screen and practice advanced forgiveness on each person here. It only takes a second or two. And that is you either say all of it or you say you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released to these people on the screen, or you can say God or Christ or Buddha to every person on the screen. And then to yourself, you say all of it or God, Christ, Buddha, or um, this body is a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. I am spirit. I'm immortal spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any thoughts or comments? Thank you, Holy Spirit Jesus. Enlightened beings for being here and helping us. Yes, Barbie, un unmute, honey. And then Gonzalo. And you're un being recorded. <laughs> um, okay. I got two questions. How do you know when you are awakened? It's for me. It's a process. It's a a content. It it builds on itself, and it even when awakened, it deepens. But awakened, it's a little different from enlightenment. Awakened is you wake up and you remember what you are, but to be enlightened, all you're illumined everything's illumined and you know when that happens <laughs> and then you know when you're when and when you can stay in the now because if, if ego's dragging me by the nose into the past and future i sure as hell not awakened <laughs> you know it's a process and we i and and it can be hundreds or thousands of moments of awakening and light episodes, revelations, they're moments, but we don't get stuck or keep wanting to re-experience that moment or that uh, 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 light moment because it unfolds, it changes. And it we, we're not living in the past. We're open, relaxed, and surrendered to Holy Spirit to guide you in your awakening process, enlightenment process. So I hope I answered that. Does that help? Yes. And two, you were talking about the ego mind and the spiritual mind. So do you think that the ego mind has ever met the spiritual mind? I th I, I'm not sure of this, but I think the Course says Ego just kind of knows something's something's there, and if you remember what's there, he's he's a, he's gone. So no, uh, not it's it's split mind. And Jesus, 
I'm just going to say what comes to mind. See, Jesus says in the course, it, it's a split mind where there's two thought systems, ego thought system and a Holy Spirit thought system, but only Holy Spirits is real. Ego's made up. So you don't think they had, have ever met because there's no such thing? Right. It doesn't exist. Holy Spirit doesn't recognize ego, doesn't attack ego. Okay. Thank you. Now, in the awakening process, though, we love, I love this self-concept as it is. My body, this, we, these are just errors that I've made. So there's there's not a hate. There's a, not a hate of ego. There's not a hate of the body. But in my awakening process, I was studying the course. And because the body was a symbol of ego, I didn't want anything to do with the body. I never thought about that the whole the chakras would open, the mind awaken, the heart open. And there'd actually be a, a joining of heart-mind, etheric heart-mind. Where then that's why you have empathy and compassion. You're no longer just intellectually thinking. And you and you just care. Um, oh my Surrey picked up something on my phone. <laughs> that's funny. Um so we're not hating ego and we're not hating the body, because that's that's not productive. And <laughs> it doesn't really exist anyway. <laughs> Yes, help. Okay. Yes, Gonzalo. Gonzalo's always got a take on some of this that helps me. <laughs> yeah, that um, you were saying about, or Barbie was asking about sort of a meeting place. So the only <laughs> simulation of a meeting place really is the Holy Spirit, who Jesus acts as a mediator between illusion and the truth like a, a, like a middle road is and that's the road that we want to walk while we're here on earth um so that in a sense you know that's why it says the, the the only illusion we need is that of forgiveness by the holy spirit because it sort of mediates and bring and it bridges the two it's still according to jesus is still forgiveness is still an illusion but that's the one that we want to practice because you know we while we're here on earth and still walking around in, in a body and so forth, we need we need a mediator, sort of a translator to get us to this uh, almighty presence of God, presence of heaven, which is too big, really. Ego can't understand that. The ego can never rationalize heaven or God. The ego can never make sense of it. That's why people have, you know, died and killed each other over religion. They're trying to, they're trying to make God an ego and project it into our physical limitations and physical faults and so forth and emotional faults. So the only reason, the only reason that we need this mediator translator of sorts is that because the ego can't understand um, pure truth. So that's, that's what it's for. It sort of it brings us along slowly toward, toward a middle ground. But uh, just to comment on what you were saying, Glenda, about the, only truth is truth and this is why you said it's constant practice it's an eternal awakening it's not like okay i get to a point and now i got it and many of us have fallen into that trap before we think in that well okay i'm enlightened just because you might have some wow meditation or wow light experience that's not that's not enlightenment those are re affirmations along the way you know when we know we start to become enlightened it's a we know the process is deepening and it's eternal like heaven, it's eternally deep. So it never stops because it's eternity, it's heaven. There's no end point as we know it. Um, it can't be explained, I'm using words right now, but it can't be explained, it can only be experienced. So our part is to accept the correction, which is available to us, the atonement, and to keep practicing that, that's our part. And then when we're ready, when Holy Spirit and Jesus, you know, believe we cleaned out enough garbage out of our, minds then we start to have deeper experiences that affirm the truth of god in us but those things can't be explained we just have to prepare ourselves and accelerate ourselves to have the experience but um 
And and still today, after 15 years of practice or practicing this, I still have doubts of the voice. And how do I know that's the ego voice or Holy Spirit's voice? I still have doubts. So those are deeper and deeper you know, crusted layers of egoic tendencies and learning that we've accumulated. And you just keep going. And the doubt lets you know whether it's true or false. You know, the doubt in our minds let us know which voice we're listening to. So we listen to that doubt. Oh man, am I, oh, am I is this all a bitch? Is this making me, you know, and, and what I'm seeing is this truth or false? That alone, the fact that we're not absolutely certain that we're being shown the light and clarity that is beyond all explanation. The fact that we're not actually certain is, is affirmation that that is not the Holy Spirit and Jesus talking. So let our state of mind, if we have anything less than pure, clear certainty and clarity, then that's not the Holy Spirit. So we just keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. Mm -hmm. and, and then the, that space of clarity and of knowing and of, and of certainty of direction from the Holy Spirit, then it becomes louder and louder and more our regular space to live in, in our minds. But we have to constantly nurture that because the layers of ego programming are so dense, we can never even imagine how dense they are. So stay at it. If any doubt there, any not even a shred of doubt, that is not Holy Spirit in you. Just keep going. Well put, Gonzalo. Just the doubt tells you it's not so spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this red light yeah. doubt and it's not Holy Spirit Jesus telling me that's not that's not true. You know, but uh -huh. just that we that's the language we have to learn. So the language of our ego, emotions, doubt, fear, guilt, shame, uh, all those things, anger, you know, and everything Glenn is saying is so true about catching it, you know, being able to be aware, saying, you know, I to whomever I love you, uh, the the prayer from last week, the light has come, I I forgive you, whoever the name is. That stuff works. It doesn't seem like it in the moment, but the practice that I call it sincere practice, the practice of it starts to sink in at a level that we're not aware of. So just stay with it. And then the doubt will start to diminish the deeper we start to cleanse our mind. Well, put, that's all you remembered last week. Yeah, the light has come. The li I forgive you. And like you said, Gonzalo, Jesus says, of course, advanced forgiveness is an illusion, but it's the illusion that will take you out of the illusion. Because, <laughs> yeah, which is we practice thinking of our brother as spirit, God, Christ, Buddha. I love you and saying, I love you. I love you. Yet bringing everybody into the circle, the whole, the pure circle of purity, bringing all our brothers into that, in with us, into that love. Way to go, Gonzalo. Thank you. Any other thoughts or comments before I stop recording? Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming out this evening. I'm going to stop in the recording.